Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Ahabatifillah. A question was asked about the Sunan prayers, about praying Nawafil after Salat al Asr. And I think the other question was maybe before Salat al Asr or, or something similar to this. So the Sunans in general as is mentioned, is sunan. And it's there to make up the khalal, the shortcomings from our regular prayer. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, Buni al-Islam ala khams, sharatin la ilaha illallah, wa sharu anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa tukimu salah. That Islam is built on five pillars in establishing the prayer. And many narrations dictate that Islam, we have five daily prayers. Beginning Salat al-Fajr, the morning prayer, Salat al-Dhuhr, the midday, mid, uh, midday prayer or the mid-afternoon prayer, then the mid-afternoon Asr, and the Maghrib, which is the Ghurub al-Shams, or the sunset prayer, and Isha, Salat al-Isha, which is the uh, last prayer uh, during the night. Those are the wajib. Those are the fara'id. Every Muslim must pray five times a day. So with regards to the Sunan of Dhuhr, Um Habiba, radiallahu ta'ala anha, <coughs> Um Habiba, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salla ithnata ashara raka yawman wa laylan buniya lahu bihinna baytun fil jannah. O kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever prays the 10 prayer units during the day and the night, Allah will make for him, build for him a, a house in paradise, meaning Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will build for him a bait in paradise, meaning if you preserve and do those regular raka'at then there will be a bait in paradise for you so very important what are those uh, going to the narration of Umm Habiba because there's many narrations about this she said Umm Habiba reports that the Prophet ﷺ said whoever prays for raka'at before dhuhr and for after it Allah will forbid that his flesh be in the fire. This is related to Dhuhr. What we know is the most, <coughs> the most uh, known sunan for Dhuhr is four rakat before Dhuhr, you know, after the Adhan, and two after. And with regards to that, The issue comes up, what about missing those sunans? For example, if you are regular in your four rakat <coughs> before dhuhr, but before the, uh, you know, after the adhan, between the adhan and the akama, <coughs> and say you came late or whatever the case may be, you missed some. So making up the sunans of dhuhr. Aisha reports that if the Prophet ﷺ missed the four rakat before dhuhr, he will pray them afterward. Right. This is related by a Tirmidhi who calls it Hassan Gharib. Ibn Majah records that she said if the Prophet missed the four rakats before Dhuhr, he will pray them following the two rakat 
after Dhuhr. So this is praying it. It's still in the time of prayer. This is no problem. No ashkal. Outside of our issue. The proceeding is concerning with making up the sunans that one is to pray before Dhuhr. Concerning making up the two rakat after Dhuhr. We have fo the following reports as reported by Imam Ahmed. Um Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> prayed Dhuhr. Then he received some wealth and he sat to distribute the wealth and continued to do so until the Mu'adhan made the Adhan of Asr. So that means Asr, the walk to Asr came in and the Prophet sallallahu was busy so he forgot to make his, uh, his prayer units, which he regularly did. This is the Sunnah Mu'akkida. This means it's, it's something that the Prophet sallallahu did regularly. He didn't, he didn't miss. So this busied him, this, uh, you know, distributing this wealth until the Mu'adhan made the Adhan for Asr. So that means Salat al-Asr, that means the walk to Dhuhr is over. He prayed Asr and came to, came to me as it was my day and he prayed two quick rakat. I said, what are those two rakat, O Messenger of Allah? Have you been ordered to perform them? He said, no, they are the two rakat that I perform after Dhuhr, but I was busy distributing this wealth until the Adhan was made for Asr and I hated to miss them. This is related by Al-Bukhari, Muslim, and by Abu Dawood in a somewhat different wording. So, Ahabat Billah, this lets us know that praying there, although we have many narrations that show that it is the uh, forbidden time to pray, but under these circumstances, as the Prophet wasallam, that shouldn't be your regular, I don't know of anything that relates to that being your regular habit of praying sunnans after asr because we know that is the waqt and nahi and so with that being the case as the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam did if you forgot your sunnans and you did and you prayed it then because it was your regular habit then under those circumstances in the ta'ala there's no no problem however because of the issues with most of the people not being aware and rejecting this no doubt this should be something that you could either pray it uh you know make up for it a, another time you wouldn't be making up for it maybe maybe it's not considered qada but just kathrata ibadah increasing your ibadah in the times when it's mashru'. but however that does not make this non not mashru'. But it isn't well known to the people. And it isn't something that is a regular sunan. But rather the Prophet ﷺ was making uh, qada. He was making up for a sunan that he missed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And I hope we answered your question. And you can find further details about this if you go to the book Fiqh Sunnah by Sayyidah Sabah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم